Hey guys, Chris Jones here with the World's Worst Fishing. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have the boat behind me today. Just got off the water and uh, it was a very, very bad trip. Got out there, had a few bites right away. Wind picked up, could barely troll around and the trolling motor battery completely died, uh, which tells me it's time to install my new trolling motor with more new batteries. Uh, and then I think I won't have that problem for a long time again, so. Um, yeah, wish I had a, at least a little bonus fishing clip to add to this video. I don't, I'm sorry. However, since my fishing trip got cut short, I have time to try my next rod build. So this is rod build number two. This will be the second built uh, rod I've ever built. And uh, yeah, let's go see if we can uh, build a good rod for you guys and uh, talk a little bit about the uh, components and uh, materials along the way. Okay, so welcome back to the fish cave. Um, there again, not doing plastics today or any lure uh, type stuff. We're building a rod. So I have here FP885MHXM. So that is the blank that we're using today. And um, this is, um, <clears throat> again, this is a rod that uh, Terry Scroggins um, suggested. Uh, he likes it for um, for uh, jigs and worms, things like that. So it's obviously it's not the uh, you know super beefy rod from our first build. Um, this one's uh, a little more versatile. You can probably do a little bit of everything with it. Um, so uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to have it. Uh, like I said, these these home built rods with with this mud hole stuff. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's it, it's so awesome. You 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 just you never want to buy one off the shelf again. So uh, I'm using some different grips this time. These are the wind grips. Um, these aren't necessarily, these are not the, uh, the MHX grips that I was using before. There we go, wind grips. Um, so I have a set of grips there, uh, Fuji uh, reel seat, and, uh, and then of course uh, a set of guides uh, from mud hole right there. And uh, yeah, so I mean, kind of the same process as before. You know, we're gonna start by reaming out the butt cap, you know, size, spacing, sizing, where, where we want things, uh, you know, so how far do I want the, the handles and, and the real seat. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start with this uh, piece right here and just kind of get, get a little bit of it started here. All right, I didn't take out a whole lot. I'll probably have to move up to the next size. All right, now we have a size up. Obviously, um, <clears throat> you know, I bought the rod building kit, which comes with these uh, these um, kind of large um, uh, bits, so so to speak, these rods that you drill out the caps with. So, Whoop. yeah, that's what we want right there. All right, same with the butt cap, of course. Actually, you know what? We'll have to uh, go up to the next size. Luckily, uh, they give you a whole set to pretty much fit any handles and grips uh, that you're gonna come in uh, use with. Okay, so we have everything reamed out. We have the, uh, the end cap there. Yeah, you can see that's been widened quite a bit. All right, so that fits on nice and then these pieces here are uh, are right where I want them. So I've got I've got my sizing about where I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a quick piece of masking tape. Where does it start? Give me a second, y'all. There it is. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of mark how far I want that handle down. That way I'll kind of know where to put my epoxy. Um, without putting my epoxy too far down the, the blank that way. So we're just going to kind of mark that off. And then what I can do is slide all this forward. And then I know, okay, I need to add my epoxy right in here for this piece. Obviously the butt cap, you don't really need to mark anything. You just put it on. 
Um, this piece right here, we're actually going to, um, it's, it's a little loose on this blank. So what we're actually gonna do is wrap masking tape around it. Um, and, and that will kind of bridge the gap between the blank and this, that way that's not loose. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we're doing it. Um, but the next step is to mix up our pro, pro paste and uh, we're gonna do that now. All right, so we have our pro paste here. So we're gonna take the back side of a plastic spoon since I don't have a popsicle stick. And we're just gonna kinda measure out some on either, either side here. So we'll get the side B going. And, uh, and then there again, just mixing this up. And uh, then we'll be ready to kinda set our real seats and, uh, and then the grips. All right, so just real quick, we're just gonna start with the butt cap. So we're actually gonna put a lot of epoxy down in it as opposed to just on the blank. Okay. And uh, actually, I need to go ahead and clean that up. All right, this is going on the back here. So we'll kind of work it on, work it back off. All right, now that I have that inside coated real well, now we'll add a little bit to the blank and really get a lot of this stuff on there. All right. And of course, clean up that excess and then we're ready to mount uh, the handle in the seat. Okay, so now that butt cap's on, so I know that I need epoxy from there to about up here, okay? So uh, the good thing about those kind of ream uh, rods that kind of hollow out these uh, wind grips here is that you can really size it right to where you don't have to build an arbor like we're gonna have to do for the um, actual real seat. So there again, that's what we're gonna do there. And that is pretty much sized to fit. You can see up here where it's a little looser. Might need some more epoxy up there. But yeah, a very, very secure fit. Uh, you know, you're not worried about this thing busting loose on you. So again, yeah. And so on and so on until you feel like you have it coated uh, fairly evenly. Okay, so the next part, we need to build a little arbor here. And the reason for that is because you'll see there's, uh, let me see if I can get it to focus. One moment, there we go. You can see there's all this space, right? See that movement there? You wanna to try to limit that movement. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to make little wraps of masking tape here to kind of essentially widen the blank to kind of bridge some of that spacing and then you epoxy over that and it just kind of builds more of a secure uh, bond between the blank and your real seat. So essentially, eh, we're going to wrap this with masking tape. And you just go around it a few times until it kind of thickens up the blank and tightens up your thick. You know, the, the whole point is, is to tighten up the, the, the fit here um, so that you don't have all that space that I just showed you. So again, we're just gonna Start small, add to it if I need to. You know, the idea is to try to get the perfect fit um, to where that masking tape sort of sort of connects all, all the dots there. All right, and so that's sort of the idea there. Again, very, very tight fit, which is good. It's kind of what we kind of what we want. Yeah. All righty. Then of course uh, we'll clean up some of this epoxy. And then I'm going to pack epoxy in that hole there. 
Again, I'm just really trying to pack, pack lots of epoxy in there. You know, you, you could solve some of this problem by simply sliding everything further down, which would give you a little bit firmer grip. However, I like a lot of spacing in my handles. Um, so this is a problem that my rods are gonna be a little bit prone to. Um, you know, obviously the further down the blank, um, your reel seat is the the better the tighter it would fit however part of custom rod building is you can space it however you want to make the rod as comfortable as possible so anyway we're going to uh, keep packing that with epoxy wipe everything down clean everything up and then we're going to slide on the little end cap and uh, then it's time to find the spine okay and just like before one of the most important parts finding the spine or spline as, as it's also called on the rod so uh, if you've seen my first rod video, you've seen this part, uh, but I'm gonna take the rod on a flat surface like a table, push down with, with one hand, push up with my other hand to really bend the rod. I'm just gonna rotate it. Now watch the rod. See how it just kind of stops? I'm gonna rotate it. Boom. Okay, that's the spine. So again, let's try it again. Boom. So right now the rod is up on spine, which means I need to do a lot of twisting. <laughs> I need to basically twist this handle all the way up. That way the handle is on spine. So let's tighten up that fixture. Now let's try it again. Okay. Having a hard time getting this one to snap. It's the bend and snap. There it is, right there. So I actually need to twist this up quite a bit more. Because you want the trigger facing, facing up at the spine. So, here again. Yeah, perfect. Straight up and down on spine. Could even go this way slightly. All right, so now we're done with that part. Okay, and there it is. There is half the battle. So again, triggers facing up towards the spine. That will ensure that, that the rod when put under torque is torqued in the right way based on the circular construction of the blank. That will ensure that the rod um, pretty much doesn't snap. You know, I mean, obviously it can happen under extreme cases, but you know, your everyday use, um, a good rod blank on spine, uh, will outlast. Um, so anyway, this is about 20 minute epoxy. Um, we're going to let it set up and uh, then we're going to start working on guides, which is the tricky part. Okay, so as you can see here, we've kind of uh, started our wrap already around this guide and we're using a little blue thread this time. You can see I've got that right there that I need to cut. Come on, baby. Yeah, there we go. So there again, I'm gonna try to wrap this as clean and even as possible while still trying to get it in focus on camera. Got the camera set up, so should be good to go. So we're just kind of going slow. I need to kind of tight, whoops, need to tighten my, uh, tension a little bit there you know with uh with with high tension you can kind of get get a little bit tighter of a wrap so yeah still need to tighten it a little more lots of learning curve on, on this stuff you know i since my first rod build i've i've practiced wrapping a few times but you know to be honest i just i haven't gotten a great deal of time with it so in any event though, that's looking pretty even. And then what we'll do is we'll tighten it up with the uh, tool that they provide. And um, yeah, and then we'll go from there. Okay, and now we have our loop set there. So again, I'm just gonna give this a couple more tight wraps. Use this tool to just kinda pack our thread as we go. 
Okay, a couple more, a couple more uh, wraps there. That way we can kind of cut our tag end off nice and clean. The sunlight is about to be directly in my garage, which makes lighting a little challenging in here. So, yeah, I think that's about the the final wrap that we can do because we're pretty much all the way up the eye. Yeah, there we go. Nice, good, even clean wrap. And here's the other side. You can kind of see once you get going and get the angle of your thread right, you know, you can pretty much twist it on there pretty evenly, pretty, pretty quickly. So, yeah, that's uh, what we're doing there. Going to finish that side up, and um, then we're going to put a little accent on there. So what I've got here is just a little bit of kind of silver thread, and we're just going to do just a little accent color, really. So... This thread is even smaller than the other stuff. So uh, got to really, really be careful. You know, this is this is kind of ornamental thread that people do inlays with. I've done a little bit of practice with, with inlays, but, but not a great deal of it. Um, so, you know, this will just kind of be just a little accent on the side. I'm sure there's a rod building term for it. But, um, yeah, that's all we're really wanting to do there is just get, just get a little accent color. So, you know, and, and again, trying to, trying to pack your threads tight, always, always, um, always a good idea. Keep things good and tight while you're doing it. Do kind of one more, one more wrap there, yeah. Huh. Oh, did that go out of focus? No. All right. All right, hopefully that will stay in focus. So we have our loop already through. So now we're just going to do what we always do. Put that through that loop there. Eh, come on. Very, very small, dealing with very small threads here, folks. All right, and pull that through. All right, and then what I can do is sort of pack this on really tight. Okay. And then just like that, we have a little accent band. Just like that. Well, we're on to the next guide here. I've kind of got it started, so we're just going to kind of start rolling it a little faster here. Really get it on there. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Yeah, not too bad. Tighten those threads up there. And it looks like we're ready to take that rubber band off. And keep wrapping here. There again, you know, this is the part that really, really takes uh, some some patience and you know, really want to try to get it right. You know, and this is my second rod build. I don't have a lot of experience, but um, you know, you definitely want to try and, and 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 get get a good wrap here. 
trying to make it look nice. So, anyway, just wanted to show you guys the next one. We'll kind of tighten up um, that thread a little more, and um, and then we'll uh, work on some other things. And now we're just kind of adding some detail right up here by the uh, real seat. So, sort of like we did last time, um, we're going to um, obviously put put a hook keep in, but then we're going to put a logo decal. Um, and the reason why I chose blue today is so that it would kind of match my world's worst fishing colors. So, again, have a little silver detail there, accent color, and uh, hopefully this will look pretty decent. Okay, and here we go. Boom. Now we have a branded rod. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, I definitely think the blue and silver is goes much better with my little logo decal here than the uh, green from the first rod build. But, you know, the thing about the green um, was that um, it, it matched the handles. So... Um, but these handles are just neutral black, so yeah. Now we're gonna do this again on that side, and uh, and then finish up our guides. Okay, and there we go. Um, that's kind of the finished thing there with the hook keep in. So need to do a little bit more work with the. Uh, I think it's a burnished tool. I think that's what it's called. Um, I should know these things, but uh, important thing is you definitely want to use this little tool to pack your threads. Um, had a little bit of a hiccup right there where it um, kind of goes over that hook keep um, but trying to take my time and really pack things uh, pack things in so you can see uh, there's that first guide again then there's the first single guide definitely got to pack that a little bit more but we're uh, we're making some good progress and uh, we'll meet you back when we have the rest of the eyes done okay so we uh, had to take a break for dinner and some daddy duty, but now we're going to uh, do the epoxy. So I have the two parts here, and this is the stuff that, again, you have to be pretty precise. So it's at the 10 milliliters, so I'm going to push it to 6. That way there's 2 milliliters of this going in. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same for the other side. That way I know that I'm keeping it even. So, well, 10 to 6 is technically 4 milliliters. Sorry. Two numbers, however, on the scale. So, and that right there is enough. Um, so now what I want to do is just kind of stir this very thoroughly. A little slow try not to get too many bubbles in it um, and then we will um, apply it to our uh, rod blank okay so now we have the uh, rod set up with the uh, automatic turner and just like the first video we're just going to dab on some epoxy and just let that rotating motion just apply it nice and evenly nice and slow nice and even that's how you avoid those air bubbles and just like with plastics like we do on this channel a lot you know if you are getting air bubbles pop it real quick with the heat gun and that will pretty much take care of any bubble issues so there again we do this to all the guides to all the uh you know any anywhere that there's thread come on focus Focus. There we go. Anywhere there's thread, we're doing this. So, and then we're actually going to do it over the entire logo on the blank there. So just epoxy this whole section. And as you can see, just slow and steady wins the race. I'm not going to show you all this because this takes a minute. So, um, but anyway, this is what we're doing. And um, 
and we'll meet you back whenever it's all done. Okay, so there it is. I have it set up on the rotator. All the uh, epoxy has been applied and heat gunned to uh, try to ensure a nice even uh, application. So there's that guide there. Okay guys, it is the next day. So here is the rod. Epoxy's all set up, nice. Yep. I really, really love the way the blue is kind of matching there. Yeah, really, really lovely. Yep. And on down, on down, <laughs> on down. And we'll just kind of go all the way to the end there. So, yeah, that is the rod. And, uh, you know, I definitely... Um, Definitely improved my wrapping uh, uh, pr pr pretty good. Not perfect, you know. What I found is, um, you know, you can, you know, you can really pack those threads super tight, but um, and and really get them right. But you know, over uh, a couple hours, they can kind of loosen up and and then not be perfectly tight anymore if if uh, if your tension was off when you originally wrapped it. So I think um, something for me as a, as a beginner to keep working on is getting my tension right uh, whenever I'm wrapping it, regardless of how clean it is. If I can get, or I, so far what I'm seeing is that if I can get really good tension on it, then once I pack those threads tightly, they're more likely to stay like that throughout the entire rest of the build. And then, you know, the, the overnight epoxy, um, you know, all that time that it has to sit before it's really locked in so um but yeah you know sort sort of just a, a simple idea um you know yeah i'll get into some of that diamond wrap stuff and and uh you know some more intricate inlays as i get experience but you know until i have some sort of mastery of it you know i wasn't really gonna try to to film with it yet um you know one one thing one thing that i always keep in mind is that a bass fishing rod sensitivity and weight and balance is the most important thing. Not making it look like an art project, you know. I'd, I I want to be able to cast this thing a thousand times a day because hello, we're bass fishing. And the more junk you put all over the blank, the less sensitive it is, the more weight you're adding. So it's it's kind of a, a, a trade-off, you know. Um, do you want to make it super ornamental or do you want to keep it more form and function? Um, so, and then here is uh, the rod from before, so. Um, you know, I definitely like that I'm kind of establishing a little bit of a, a trend here that will be recognizable. But like I said, I'll probably do a few th different things, uh, you know, in, in the future with uh, wrapping once I get a little better at it. So anyway, uh, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, you know, if you haven't tried this rod building stuff, I don't know if that's in focus. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot on the screen. But if you haven't tried this rod building stuff, Definitely give it a shot. I think you will really, really enjoy it. So, um, yeah, shoot me lots of comments below and uh, let me know what you think. And uh, let me know if you build rods yourself and, and how you uh, how you like to do it and what kind of rods you build. You know, I'm sure I'll probably build a few rods other than just bass fishing. Um, but, you know, that's all uh, hopefully to come in time. So we're going to sign off. Thank you guys so much for watching.